I am the smoothest. <laughs> this is a slightly belated one year on Lodos T video. I found out that the half-life of testosterone gel is very short. So originally when I decided to go on the equivalent of, I think it was like a, uh, a third or a quarter of a full FTM dose, I thought, okay, I'll do one full pump every second day. I got my levels tested after being on one full pump every two days. Uh, for reference, the full FTM uh, recommended dose is two pumps per day every morning. But I got my levels tested and they were super, super low. They were 20 nanograms per deciliter. For reference, that is below average for a cis female. And I was really confused. Uh, so I did some research and it turns out the half-life of testosterone gel or cream is so short that if you don't take it once every 24 hours, so every morning, you're not gonna get the effects because it it's processed in your body so quickly. So I realized that that's kind of why nothing was happening for months and months and months. So after that, I decided to, initially I decided to switch to one pump every morning because it didn't occur to me, and this is, seems really obvious, but it didn't occur to me at the time, that I could, of course, not rub the full pump onto my body. So I was on uh, one pump every morning, which is like half an FTM dose for two or three weeks, and my peach fuzz started growing in a ton. It didn't get darker, it just like started growing longer and more of it kind of in this very specific part of my face, and I've been plucking it like crazy because uh, I'm not keen on that. The straw that bro broke the camel's back, I guess, was I found this one very spiky, very dark hair growing out of the spot on my chin. And I realized at that point <laughs> that I absolutely do wa not want any facial hair whatsoever. Like, I I'm just, no, I'm just, I do not, you know, so after two or three weeks of that, it occurred to me like, oh, of course I could just not have the full pump every morning. So what I did was I did the full pump and measured, like I drew a line on the bottle where that was and then I let it up again. And then I measured half of that and a third of that. And I was on a third of a pump for a little while uh, every morning for about a month. Um, and the, uh, the spiky head didn't come back. My peach fuzz, my little fuzz um, kind of slowed down, but it was still sort of coming through a bit. So I'd been on the third of the pump every morning and I'll show you in a layover clip how I did that. Uh, I used a piece of tape to kind of really make it clear where I wanted to uh, finish the, the pumpy bit. That was cool. So I got my results back. I, I went and got my T levels tested again, being on that every morning, one third of a pump. And my levels were at 144, which is about double the highest uh, average cis female range, but half of what would be considered normal uh, cis male range. That was fine. I've decided to try a tiny bit less than that, so maybe a quarter every morning. I don't want to be too far out of the highest cis female range just because I really don't want facial hair. So you might be saying, well, Britta, where the fuck are you on, T? <laughs> like, what do you want from this? What are you getting out of this? Why did you start it to begin with? Uh, so this is <laughs> gonna get a little personal if you know me and my personal life. Just leave. This is one of those things, you know, if you wanna know this from me, we should have a chat, but it'd be weird if you get this info from me off the internet. Um, so yeah, my, my theory is that my T levels used to be pretty average. And then after my dad passed away, it just wrecked my whole system. Like it's, it's a huge traumatic shock, uh, especially cause he was my second parent to pass away. So like suddenly <laughs> I'm like this young adult often last year specifically, my sex drive was really, really low, like really low. And I want to say like, there's no problem with having a really low sex drive. Um, you know, I went to a doctor and asked for that and she said, you know, it's okay to not desire sex that often. Like, that's totally fine. Um, don't feel like you need to or you should want to, you know, don't, don't be pressured into this. Um, you know, but I'm like, I, I like sex, uh, at least, I'd like to be having sex at least once a week, you know, that makes me feel really good. Um, and right now, this is last year, right? I wasn't feeling that. And being on this third of a dose kind of thing has been really good for that. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is this 
one year on low dose tea and my levels have been all over the place. Um, I was I was up at like full cis male range for about a month, uh, which is where most of the changes happened. Apart from the peach fuzz, which is kind of a more recent thing, um, the, the difference in my voice between now and a year ago is very subtle, but that all happened in that one month back in April that I was on that full amount and my, my stomach got really hairy. Uh, but also my jawline changed a little bit which I, I really like. Like, um, I feel like when my levels are lower, my face looks a little rounder. Uh, and when they've been kind of higher, I've got this more, I, don't know, I just like it. Um, it's, it's weird, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm on tea for the aesthetic. <laughs> um, but I feel, I feel a hell of a lot better being on a very small amount of the pump every morning, as opposed to before when I was on one pump every two days, or sometimes it was one pump every three days. Yeah, so if you're ever gonna go on gel or cream, make sure that whatever your dosage is, you you figure out exactly what you need to be on every morning to have a consistent level. Because that, I think, was another problem I was having last year, was I was having mood swings, especially around PMS, and that was never a problem I had before. So again, I think after my dad passed away, my hormone levels just went haywire because last year, like 2016, I was having a lot of issues that all kind of fell under this list of hormone issues and fluctuations and problems. I've been on this, uh, I've been on this third of a pump every morning for a little while and I feel a lot better with that consistent hormone level. It's just little things like I laugh more frequently and for longer periods of time. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm not saying this is because this, of the testosterone. I think it's because of the hormone consistency, right? Like my levels aren't jumping up and down anymore. Uh, Cause before, like I went on the second day after my pump. So I did it say on a Monday morning, I had the one pump and then I went for my test like Tuesday afternoon and my levels were super low. So they must've been roller coastering um, all the time. But now that I'm on it every morning, there's probably a little bit of fluctuation because they say it takes about four hours to absorb and um, then you've got to reapply it the next morning. Um, but the fluctuations are far less, there's far less, uh, less, uh, uh, far less of that. So it's more kind of smooth. And yeah, I feel really good. Like I said, I'm gonna try a tiny bit less than a third of a pump just because my, I've been spending a few mornings a week plucking hairs out of my chin. Um, and I don't think my levels need to be quite at 144. So I might get them tested again in a few months and see if they're a bit lower. Uh, I think anywhere between like 75 and 120 would be good for me because I'd still get that hormone consistency. It shouldn't be too much lower that my sex drive is bad again. Um, it shouldn't be too low that I lose my, uh, face shape change that I really like and it's not just in my head okay because I thought maybe I just maybe it's just placebo maybe I just think my face is different but I was at a party the other day and this chick this straight chick says to me she's like Britta I'm not hitting on you or anything but your jawline mm, your jawline and uh, I was super chuffed and real stoked and um yeah, and also that says to me that like it's a thing, and you know, it, it's not a, it's not the only reason. Like if it was the only change, then I I wouldn't justify staying on tea, um, but <laughs> it's a change that I enjoy, so that's cool. So yeah, I, I'm I'm I feel like I started with my levels really low, and then I was super high, and I was super low again. I feel but not quite as low. I feel like I'm kind of a pendulum, sort of aiming for the sweet spot. And I'm almost there, like I'm almost where I would feel optimal at, right? So apart from the sex drive thing, mentally and emotionally, yeah, I don't think the testosterone itself has done anything. I think it's more just having even levels. And like I said, uh, there was this huge traumatic event in my life that after that is when I started having these problems and I'm pretty sure if my dad hadn't passed away and all that hadn't have happened I wouldn't have gone on low dose tea um, because I wouldn't have had enough reason to 
and I have no idea what my levels were before he passed away. I don't know, I just know last year they were really low. So yeah, I think for me it's a really unique situation that probably a lot of people can't really relate to. If you're watching this video to, to find out if you want to go on low dose tea, um, it's leveling my hormone levels out in a way that a lot of people already probably have naturally. Uh, so I wouldn't, you know, take that into consideration unless you are having issues with PMS and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're on the pumpy gel bottle and you want to know what levels are good for you, I would probably start with a really low amount, like measure the thing and go half a pump a day or a quarter of a pump a day, even though the bottle says twice a day, two, two full pumps a day. Um, and you can kind of get there. Yeah, my voice is definitely lower than it was last year. I've noticed it, other people have noticed it. Not my colleagues, just the people who I've told I am on Lotus Tea. On the phone, I still get read as female. That's the big one, right? On the phone, when I answer the phone, they call me miss, they call me ma'am. Even if, even telemarketers that don't know my name, don't have my information, they're like, oh, we got your number off a random generator. We want to sell you shit. They, they call me ma'am and miss. So even though it's missus now, because I'm married. So <laughs> what's that about? Um, no, it's not. It's, it's MX which I think is pronounced mix. It looks way better on paper. I'd rather be like, see my name MX Britta on paper than like, hello mix Britta. It makes me feel like a DJ or something. <laughs> so I'm a little fuzzier and my voice is a little lower. I haven't measured my weight recently, so I can't tell you, but I guess I can show you my muscle mass. Um, The shirts that I bought before I started Lodos Tea and fit me really well, were beginning to be too tight on me back in April when I was on the full dose for a month and they were starting to uh I was starting to hulk out in the shoulders they were starting to pull a little hair and I was having some problems with the I don't know if you know about uh shirts men's fashion I think I don't know anything about women's fashion maybe that as well t-shirts and shirts the seam line for the shoulder is meant to sit right where your shoulder drops. It's not meant to be too far out because then the garment's too big for you. And it's not meant to be back here because then it's too small. And the shirts I had, I bought before starting tea back in April when I was on the full dose, the, the seam was starting to ride up a bit and I wasn't changing my wash cycle or anything. I wasn't shrinking my clothes. My shoulders were just getting broader. Since I've been on the lower dose and my levels have dropped back down to, they were at 20, 20 nanograms per deciliter for months and now they're back up to 140 and they've been about there for like a month and a half. Um, I haven't had that problem. Now I'm checking, does this shirt fit me? This is an undershirt. It's actually meant to be worn under shirts. Uh, so it was meant to be a little tight, but um, the shirts that were too tight on me back in April fit me again now and I'm not hulking out as much. So I, I definitely think I've lost some shoulder mass. I find that my hormone levels don't affect my stamina at all, but they do affect my strength. Um, so like I'm stronger, but I can climb for just as long or I can work out for just as long. Yep. Yeah, so in regards to the stamina thing, I think it's really important for you to know that testosterone is not a replacement for caffeine, it's not a replacement for any kind of energy booster. Some people go on tea and they report having a lot of energy. Some other people go on tea, they get lethargic and tired and they sleep longer. So don't take tea thinking that you're gonna get all this energy because like you have more muscles, so you must have more energy. No, you have more muscles, but your stamina, for me, my stamina remained the same. Um, you know, I work in the film industry, so I have to be able to go for 12 hours, sometimes sometimes 14 when I'm data wrangling, but I get paid overtime, so that's cool. But my stamina has remained the same, even though I felt stronger. Like, I lift the same equipment, you know, it's the same camera, it's the same tripod, I'm carrying it. When my levels are lower, it feels heavier, but I just have to, I <laughs> don't grunt a bit more. <laughs> um, but I can still go for just as long. I don't fatigue any sooner or later. And again, this is just my experience and might be different for other people. I've heard other people say like, oh yeah, I can go for ages. I'm so, I'm so energetic. And other people are like, man, I just eat all the time and I want to nap all the time. Um, so I, I 
these updates are partially what I've experienced, but they're also pas partially about what testosterone doesn't do or won't necessarily do for you. And I had someone recently say to me, Britta, I'm feeling really lethargic and tired all the time. I'm thinking about going on low dose tea. I'm like, mm, it may or may not have that effect, but that's not really what it's used for. I wouldn't recommend that being your first stop. If you got your levels tested and they were super low, then you could maybe look into it. Um, you know, like fatigue is one of the things they say is an effect of having low testosterone. But if you don't have low testosterone, then your lethargy is probably due to something else. This particular person I'm thinking of just does a lot. They just don't, <laughs> they just don't spend a lot of time sleeping. So I'm not sure you could just like take testosterone instead of taking caffeine and have the same benefits yeah and it's not an antidepressant as well the people you see on youtube who are super super stoked about being on testosterone just because they had dysphoria or they um had a goal that involved effects that very directly stem from testosterone uh for me i don't want my voice to go any lower i definitely don't want facial hair but I feel, ugh, I don't even know how to explain it. When my level is super low, well, firstly, I, I don't have a sex drive at all, which sucks. But like part of that as well is just feeling really yuck in my body. I don't know how to explain that any better. And I'm definitely not implying that cis women feel gross in their bodies. Like I said, this is an issue that I only had last year after my dad passed away. Um, in college, I was, Felt really good in my body, apart from my breast dysphoria, which I had a lot of. But apart from my chest dysphoria, everything else, I felt great in my body, had tons of energy, lots of stamina, um, was really social, get up and go kind of person. Um, my sex drive was in the range that I wanted it to be in. Like I said, my circumstances kind of led me to this situation in which I'm on low dose tea, and that's quite unique for me, and it's working out for me. But there was always the option that it wouldn't and I always allowed for that to be a possibility and if at any point T was not, if at any point I was getting less positive results from the low dose T than negative results, I was quite happy stopping. I was never invested in this being the answer and I think that's why I was okay with myself going into the situation and deciding to go on low dose T because I said to myself this might not solve your problems. If it does, it won't solve all of them. There might be some negative side effects. Don't bank on this being the miracle solution. And even though now, one year later, I'm in a good place, I've been kind of all over the place this year. I've had some low key mental breakdowns that might have been to do with me fluctuating my hormones synthetically, you know, in hindsight. <laughs> Not great. The last three or four weeks when I've been on the third of a pump every morning, that's been good. That has been good for me. I think I've found my sweet spot now. But like I said, I'm not trying to lower it a tiny bit. But I think I've, I've found my sweet range. <laughs> I'm trying to stay within that. I just want to see like, how low can I go without losing the good side effects? But I want to get as far away from bed growth as I possibly can. Having said all that, I have this like little blonde bits coming in just on the sideburn area and I think it's really cute. <laughs> it's mostly just these stray chin hairs that just decide to go really long randomly and a few on my neck. Uh, for context, my brother, he's a lovely, lovely man. He is also super hairy. <laughs> so genetically, I'm not surprised. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and edit this. Thank you for your time and sorry I rambled. Hopefully you got some kind of good information out of this. If not, I'm sorry I just wasted however many minutes of your life. Go have a Christmas or a Hanukkah or a, or a holiday of some sort and enjoy that. Bye!